Hey YouTube, what's up? Mike the Manic Geek here. Now on today's episode of Manic Tech, we are gonna be taking a look at a new power supply from Silverstone. Uh, this is their newest edition of Strider power supplies, which are 80 plus platinum certified, and also boasts the trait of being the smallest ATX form factor power supply on the market. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and See what we can see. All right, so to start off, we'll discuss all of the cabling and connectivity that you get out of the box. You get your 24 pin ATX cable. You also get your four plus four pin EPS 12 volt, which will let you accommodate either four pin or eight pin uh, CPU power. You get two six plus two pin PCI Express cables. You get eight SATA uh, connections. You get six peripheral or Molex connectors. And you even get two floppy four pin connectors for those of you weirdos that are still using floppy disks for some strange reason. Uh, all of the cables are of fairly ample length, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> which I find a little odd considering that this is uh, boasted about as being the smallest form factor of the smallest ATX power supply that you can get, but it still has fairly reasonably long cables. So I question the decision to include standard length cables with this, but that's just a little nitpicky at this point. So just to give you guys a cleaner idea of exactly how small this power supply is, that's my hand up against it with all of the cables removed. This thing is not very large at all, and they come in 550 watt all the way up to 750 watt capacities, so realistically, there is just about no standard computer out there that this power supply line couldn't power. Um, and it also does feature a really nice, clean, uh, flat black uh, paint job on the outside of it. Nothing really to draw a whole lot of attention to it. Uh, it does have an embossed Silverstone logo in the back over here. Uh, I really like this sort of discreet branding that power supply manufacturers are going towards these days. It lets you see who makes the power supply without it being so blingy and standout-ish. Uh, the stat sticker on the side is a plain black and white affair, so that's not really going to clash with many systems at all. And the grill on the top for the fan here actually has a really nice uh, Silverstone Snowflake logo on it. So if you're one of those individuals that prefers to show off the fan grill area for your power supply, you will be rewarded by having a really nice looking grill set on the top here. Now, all of your connectivity at the back of the power supply is uh, fairly standard fare here, with the exception of this little guy right here. This is your Sense 4-pin connector. Now, this is run off of your 24-pin connector right here, and it comes off as a completely separate cable. Now, essentially what this cable is doing is it's tied into the voltage regulation circuits for this power supply that enable it to more accurately uh, determine what your 3.3, 5, and 12 volt loads are for your system so that it knows more effectively how to deliver power and where to deliver it within the computer. It is not a second 4-pin EPS 12 volt power supply. Do not try to run anything on your computer off of this port. Not that I would imagine there's much that you could fit here other than the sense connector anyway. Now something else to note really quick here is that this power supply is in fact compatible with Silverstone's shorty cable kit that they sell. Um, <clears throat> I like that a lot because this is a very small form factor power supply. It really needed to have short cables in the first place. But the problem with the shorty kit is, at least as far as I can see, they don't offer a version of it that still has the sense cable that's going to work with the Platinum Series power supplies. Your mileage may vary with your experience with that. I don't personally have the shorty cable kit to use with this to test, but their website states that it is compatible. And if that changes at some point in time, I'll go ahead and add an annotation somewhere in here, uh, letting you guys know what the deal with that is. Now, never one to shy away from voiding warranties. Uh, I did go ahead and open up this power supply so I could give you guys a closer look at what's really going on in here. Now, I will mention right off the bat that this does void your warranty opening your power supply. So, same thing goes with keyboards, headsets, mice, any other peripheral like that. You take it apart, you, chances are you're voiding your warranty. Unless it states otherwise, something like a graphics card or something like that. But we went ahead and opened it up, we took a look inside, and we're seeing that we've got a lot 
of real estate in here, like lots of room for all of the things, which makes sense that this would be able to scale up to 750 watts in the first place. You've got really, uh, you've got really clean soldering on all of the joints here. Uh, we also take a look at the uh, temperature sensing circuit that's on the inside here. Uh, this circuit is actually part of what controls uh, fan speed for this power supply because it is a semi-passive uh, power supply in that if the load isn't high enough, the fan isn't going to spin on this. And it senses temperature by attaching <clears throat> a temp probe onto the frontmost fin of what I would suspect is the heaviest load heat sink on this power supply. It then sends a signal back over to a separate daughter board on the inside that is attached to your fan here that's going to, that's going to help it determine at what speed it needs to be spinning at. It's a really clean implementation here and it's something that doesn't really take up a whole lot of space. I really like that. The other thing that I really like a lot on the inside of this is the use of capacitors. Everything that I can see in here that's a primary capacitor is using quality Japanese Chemicon capacitors, which really are some of the, the, the best capacitors that you can source out there. So the fact that they're using them in this power supply is a really good sign here. So before we get into my results with the testing, uh, the power supply does include quite a bit of documentation here. Now, this black manual, uh, <clears throat> this is basically a generic how to set up your power supply booklet in all of the languages. It's not bad, but it's a little generic and it's using some outdated hardware and it, this could probably stand a little bit of an update across all languages just because of all the pictures and what have you that they're using. Maybe standardize it to specific series of power supplies. That would be nice too. But really, it's this little white booklet here that I'm most interested in. This little booklet gives you essentially all of the readouts that you should be receiving on any given circuit at any given time on this power supply. Then they even tell you how to go about uh, looking at the different uh, the different circuits on this power supply and how to uh, how to sort of troubleshoot it at a very basic level. This is information that can help anyone learn anything they need to know about the power supply that they're using and in general other power supplies out there, which ultimately just makes you a more informed enthusiast. Now there is something I wanted to actually point out here really quick before I get too far ahead. Uh, as part of the included supplies here, and they do give you uh, zip ties and uh, Velcro straps and things like that for your cables, they also give you little thumb screws for the power supply to make it easier to take out. Now what I really like about these is not only are they obviously the same threading as your, tip your typical case screw, but it's a really low profile head that they use on this, which means it's still not going to stick out like a sore thumb at the back of your case uh, should you decide to use these. And they do still have both flathead and Phillips head screwdriver accommodations on them, so even if you do decide you want to torque them down and just like the look of them, I really like the, these, little, these little subtle additions like this that make the whole experience just that little bit better. Now, since I don't have a proper power supply tester, and yes, I do know how to back probe a power supply and take available voltage readings, and I do have a basic uh, USB oscilloscope that I could use to check ripple, I can't really test minute variations in, in ripple <clears throat> and available voltage on this power supply, but what I can do is hook it up to piece. So what I did was I basically just opened up the back of piece, swapped out the swapped out my existing power supply cables uh, for cables from the Silverstone unit, plugged everything in and got it running, and <clears throat> I then ran the system at a full system load using A to 64. Now this includes processor, RAM, hard drives, and graphics card, all being loaded simultaneously. Now those of you that have done this know that A to 64 doesn't maintain a consistent load when doing that test. However, my personal rig, after about 30 minutes, peaks at about 510 watts of power consumption from the wall, accounting for heat and extra resistance in those circuits. So the fact that this little power supply not only comfortably powered my entire rig, no problem, in the most unrealistic scenario possible, but it did so without making any noise at all like at all. 
I wanted to actually get my lav mic next to this to get you guys an impression of how quiet this thing is, but I couldn't get a clean enough recording that didn't have sounds from my computer elsewhere drowning out the sounds of this power supply. Literally the only thing that I heard was a very slight ticking coming from the fan here, and I guarantee you, even if you have this thing inside of something like an Inwin D-frame, by the time you get it in a case and your entire system is running, there is, no, there is no way you're going to hear this over the rest of the hardware in your system unless there's something wrong with it. All right, so let's discuss price now because really that's the end game here. At about $110 to $120 for this power supply, this is actually probably the most expensive power supply realistically in its class. That being said, most power supplies in this class are going to be extremely expensive anyway because they are so efficient. But really what you're getting here is, is a bit above and beyond most of the other power supplies in this grouping, which admittedly is still very small, but you get more accurate voltage regulation, you get semi-passive uh, fan modes on this, and even when the fan is spinning, it makes no noise at all. Uh, you get fully modular cables, which are extremely malleable, very easy to work with, and in this case, very easy to customize. And really, I, I just, I, I can't, if, if this is in your budget to consider, this is absolutely the power supply that I would go for. Mostly because it does save those few extra uh, centimeters in your build to do more with the floor of your case and get cleaner cable management going. Uh, <clears throat> but it's just an extremely strong power supply in general. Uh, even my fiance's rig is using one of the Strider Gold S versions of these power supplies. It's been going strong in her rig for about two or three years now and I foresee us continuing to use it until it just doesn't support the standard that we're working with anymore. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What's your experience been with Silverstone power supplies? Had anything good happen? Had anything bad happen? Had anything burst into flames and explode on you? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Also, a hundred plus dollars for a 550 watt power supply. Even if it is extremely efficient and clean with cable management, what's your personal take on it? Me? I personally like the improvements in efficiency here. I like seeing a company take a stance on efficient, clean power delivery that isn't wasted in something like waste heat and is ultimately pushing for making stuff like this more affordable later on down the line and ultimately giving us all much greener PCs in the process. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and head out for right now. Uh, do that thumbs up, thumbs down, share, and subscribe thing like you do how you do. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy, YouTube.